Well, praise God. I want to welcome all you here this morning and those that are watching online. Praise the Lord. And um, we are in a series of fasting. Glory to God. And um, we are actually doing a 21 day fast. Um, so you still can join us. We have seven more days left. Amen. <laughs> and uh, so if you haven't started or if you're a little leery in fasting, I want to encourage you to start fasting. Do something this week, you know. Uh, join us. And uh, I believe that God can, can wreck your life in a good way. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and, and so I really believe as we fast and pray, God can reveal himself to us in a greater measure. And, uh, and more of God is more good. Amen. And so we are talking about fasting. And... Uh, I believe that as we fast and we start off the new year putting God first place, God's going to do miracles all through this new year. Do you believe that today? And, I, and I'm standing in, in agreement that God's going to be doing miracles in your finances and in, in your health. You know, we've gotten reports back because we, 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 have, we do fasting every year at the first of the year. And I've gotten reports back where people got healed during their fast. And people that were dealing with long-term illnesses are getting healed and delivered and set free. And so I, God wants you healthy. Amen. <laughs> you believe that? And God is so good. So um, uh, just to recap on some of our, our fasting services, um, the first uh, fasting service I talked about is that, that fasting is all through the Bible. And um, fasting is connected with God's grace, with his mercy, with his favor, with divine protection. Um, every time you, you looked into the Bible in the Old and New Testament, you see that when people fasted and prayed, um, God did things in the midst of them. Amen. And, uh, you know, I, I, I did preach that, that, that it's a Christian discipline. And Jesus talks about that in Matthew 6. He talks about when you, uh, when you give and when you fast and when you pray. And, uh, but really, what the Lord revealed to me, it's really, it's, a, it's our Christian love devotion to God. So, so praying is a love devotion to God. It's better than saying it's a discipline or it's, it's we love God. So we pray to God. Amen. Amen. We love God and we give to God. Yes. Amen. We do it out of a heart of love, not just out of a discipline, but we do it out of a heart of love because because God first loved us and gave his son for us. So we are givers because God is the greatest giver. So Jesus talks about, you know, rewards in giving, rewards in praying, and rewards in fasting. And, and so uh, that was the first session. And bottom line is this, is that when we do it, we're doing it uh, for God, and we're not doing it to make a show. Amen. Amen? And so we don't want to be showing off. We're not fasting for competition to see how long we can go. And so we can brag about it at the end. Amen. And so we want to we want to fast with with the right motives and the right purposes. And so I, I, hopefully we're fasting uh, and then God will. Re, the Bible says he will reward us openly in doing these three things, giving, fasting and and praying. And, you know, I, I didn't hit on this during the, the series, but Cornelius in chapter 10 of Acts was a Italian cohort. And he was an Italian, but uh, we believe, I believe he was a proselyte, which means that, that he uh, worshipped the God of Israel. And uh, the Bible said that he did all three. He fasted, he was praying, and he was giving alms to the Jewish people. And the Bible actually said that God sent an angel to him to, uh, to reveal the way of of salvation and and God showed him that uh, Peter, which was the apostle, uh, that that he could go to, gave gave him directions to Peter's house, and Peter came in and preached the gospel. And during because of his fast and his praying and his almsgiving, uh, the angel actually said to Peter that his 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 fasting and praying and and his almsgiving came up as a memorial unto the Lord, and the Lord. Um, uh, had to do something. I'm going to say this, that when we give and we pray and we fast, um, we're touching the heart of God. I'm going to say that again. We want, God to, we want God to touch our hearts, but when we're seeking him, we're touching his heart. 
And then when we touch his heart, guess what? He's going to touch our hearts. He's going to touch our lives. He's going to radically do awesome things in our lives. You believe that today? And so number two, fasting and praying uh, is a good way for a breakthrough. And I don't know about you, but maybe last year you, you dealt with some areas that you just, some hurdles you couldn't get over. Uh, maybe some, some walls that seems to be, uh, you know, blocking you from, from your prayer life, from what you're believing God for. Maybe, maybe the enemy's uh, dealing in your family or, or dealing in your, with your relatives or with you personally. I believe when you fast and pray, you can get a breakthrough. Amen. And really, I really believe that a lot of times it's a perspective change. In other words, um, we may be going through something, but God will show us how to come out of that thing um, shining on the other side. Do you believe that today? So really, when, whatever we're going through, um, we need to seek God's wisdom to how to deal with those situations in life. And God will give you that wisdom and show you how to come out you know, shining on the other side. Amen? And so I like that. Uh, in Isaiah 58, 6, it says this, Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loosen the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? So, you know, you might be getting weary in your fast, so I want to encourage you to continue to read Isaiah 58, all the blessings that fasting will bring into your life, you need to remind yourself because we can get weary in well-doing. Anybody thought about quitting? <laughs> Say, I'm, I'm done fasting. Amen. No, no, keep pushing through. The Bible says if you don't give up, if you don't faint, you keep doing good, you will reap the blessing if you fail not. Amen. And so we don't want to, we don't want to, uh, stop short. We want to keep pushing in. And maybe maybe you had a day or two where you fell back. That's all right. Just just get back up and start back over again. I mean, some of you might want to do another 21-day fast after we're done. Okay. <laughs> back to back. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. But but I know you're gonna, we're going to be celebrating because Sunday is going to be our day of feasting. Amen. And so... Um, we talked about fasting for vision last week. And, uh, you know, I really think as Christians, uh, we can walk our walk with God, but sometimes we can lose sight of our purpose that God has for us. God, God has purpose for each one of us. And we can lose sight and we can just be trying to make it through the day and try to make it through the week. You know what I'm talking about? But really, we're not, supposed, we're not called just to make it, but we're called to be triumphant in this life and to walk in purpose. Amen? And really, uh, we need to fast for vision. We need, sometimes if, we're, if our walk is a little dull, if, if our walk is not really exciting like it used to be, then we need to get back into the, the, the presence of God. And we need to have a, a, a God encounter. You know, and, and you'll find that a lot of people, uh, man, I'm getting out of my chair now. Uh, you find that a lot of people in the Bible that had God encounters, they affected their community, their, their society, their nation in a good way. And God wants to, he wants to encounter you. He, he, he wants you being in a place where you're seeking him, where, where you can present yourself to him and he can reveal himself to you. I, I think about Moses and, and Moses, you know, was a man that, that uh, had a calling of God on his life. And, uh, you know, he was, he was raised up in an Egyptian home, but he was a, a Hebrew. And, uh, and the Bible actually says that, that, um, that, that, that he knew he had a call on his life. And the Bible said that he w wasn't willing to stay in, in the, 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 the castle or the mansion of the Egyptian house. But he'd rather to suffer with the people uh, of God. And the Bible says at age 40, he was so zealous, um, he saw an Egyptian um, uh, uh, hurting uh, one of his fellow Israelites... And, uh, and he ended up getting angry and killing that Egyptian. And what happened was, you know, he thought he was going to deliver uh, the, you know, his people by the arm of the flesh. But you can't, you can't get deliverance out of the arm of the flesh. The only way you're going to get deliverance is by the power of God. 
And I'm going to say this, sometimes we're trying to get our deliverance by our own strength. That's why when we fast and pray, we're, get, we're getting God's super on our natural. In other words, we're getting God to invade us. And we know that, that I don't know, maybe, maybe you made some mistakes in your life. Maybe your past isn't all that great. Uh, maybe, maybe there's some areas that, that you live that, that, that you're not really proud of. But you know what? I, 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 like, I like what the, the Bible says. Every day is a new day in God. And I'm, I'm telling you today that God can give you a fresh perspective and, you know, you can, you can uh, allow the blood of Jesus to wash your past away and you can begin new every day. I like what the Bible says is his mercies are renewed every morning. So even, you know, so don't, you know, Moses, he was he he he, he killed an Egyptian. He fleed from Egypt. He was on a backside of a desert. Um, he was 80 years of age. Uh, he knew he had a calling, but he thought he lost it. I'm, I'm going to say this. You know, you know, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. That, that means that if God has given you a gift and a calling, he's not going to take it back. So, so you just get ready to step in ministry. Get ready to move forward in God. Because God has something great for some of you in here. You believe that today? God has something awesome in store for you. But we got to get in his presence. And Moses, you know, was, was uh, one day he was walking by a bush that was on fire. But the bush wasn't being consumed. And God spoke to him through a burning bush. And when we fast and pray, we need a burning bush experience with God. We need a God encounter. And God revealed to Moses that he would uh, deliver the children of Israel uh, out of the Egyptian bondage. And, and God revealed that to him. And of course, you know, he kind of shrank back and said, who am I? You know, a lot of times we, we, we look at our own smallness of our own selves and we say, who are we in the bigness of the plan of God? You're somebody in Jesus. You know, we're nobody without Jesus, but we're somebody with Jesus. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? And, and see, the enemy will try to get us to look at our shortcomings and try to get us to look at what, what, how we don't measure up. But I'm going to tell you this. The anointing of God is the equalizer. In other words, you may not have a lot of talent, you may not have a lot of ability, but if, if God puts his anointing or his grace on your life, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And the enemy will try to lie to some of you, make you think that you don't have much, but if you have God, you have everything. And when we get in God's presence and we get his anointing on our life, it doesn't matter if all hell is breaking loose against us. We're going to walk through the fire without the smell of smoke. Do you believe that today? I'm telling you, that's what we're doing. We're endeavoring to get in God's presence. We're endeavoring to get into a place where we can experience God in a real way. I got it. I got to have I got to have a God touch on my life. And I'm not I don't need the God touch every Sunday morning. I need the God touch every day of my life. Is anybody experiencing uh, any uh, uh, heartbreaks or or anybody experiencing any turbulence in your walk with God? And I would have to say most Christians are. You're, you're either coming out of a storm or you're in a rest point or you're going to be going into a storm. And I'm not going to prophesy that, but there are storms that are coming. They come, the Bible says that the, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. So that can mean two ways. The goodness of God falls on the just and unjust or the, or, or the rain of, of, of the enemy's terror may fall upon the just and the unjust. Amen. So, so again, we're talking about fasting and praying and we're talking about fasting and praying for vision. And I like this because most of the time what we need from God is we need just a revelation of what to do. Amen. Amen. A lot of times we're trying to do things on our own, trying to figure it out on our own. But when God reveals to you some truth on what you need to do in your storm, it's going to work. And I like this in Acts 13 
1 through 3. And this was the apostles, and some of the apostles were together. And, and it starts off, it says, Now in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius and Cyrene, and Manian, who had been brought up in the Herod of Tetrarch, and Saul, as, I'm glad I got through that, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, notice this, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, you know, when you fasting and praying, you know, I call that, it's our heart devotion to God. When we minister, it, 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 what you're doing is you're saying to God, I'm, sust- I'm not going to, I'm pushing away the food, physical food, so I can have some spiritual food. I'm pushing away the natural so I can encounter the supernatural. Don't get nervous about the word super. <laughs> Amen. It's, in other words, God wants his super on our natural. In other words, he, he wants us Push it away from the natural so we can walk in uh, his divine power every day. And it says here, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and they sent them away. So we see here that the Holy Spirit spoke and separated Barnabas and Saul for the work of the ministry, gave them assignment. And I'm, I'm going to say that I, I believe this, that we all have assignments that God wants us to fulfill. And when we're, listen, some of us, were not in that assignment like we need to be. And that's the reason why some of our lives, are, we're not walking in the peace that God has for us. We're not walking in that joy that God has for us because we're not exactly in that place where God wants us to be. And so when we're not exactly in that place, we can forfeit some of the blessings of God's peace in our life. See, it's, it's good for us, some of us, not to have some peace at times. Because, because that, should, that should check us to where we're at in God. Or if we're not experiencing God's joy. Or if there's some famine in our life. That should bring us to a place where we want to get into the presence of Almighty God. To reveal to us how to walk back into that abundant life that he promised us. Amen. And, and I'm telling you, when I'm not walking in that peace or that joy. like I See, see the Bible says you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. And I, I, and I want that joy on my life. I want that peace. But if I'm not sensing that, I need to get into the presence of God and, 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 and hear from God, what is my assignment? What, see, see, God has an assignment, again, for everybody. See, the, the first thing that God has an assignment for every Christian is that they need to have a church home. They need to be under a church, so they need to be a part of a church, and a, 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 a growing church, so, so they can come in and hear the word of God and be built up and have strong faith to be able to stand against all the things that the enemy will try to do against them. And every believer uh, needs to ha- be in a place where they can allow their gifts to be used, amen, for the glory of God. Amen. That's the reason why we have classes and that's the reason why we 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 bring people in and uh, because we want you using your gifts and your talents for the glory of God. And when you find out your assignment and you start walking in the assignment, now you can walk in that assignment. But you have if you have a bad attitude walking in your assignment, you may not receive the fullness of God's blessing in that assignment. In other words, you gotta, you, you got to get excited about your assignment. you got to get excited about what God is doing in your life. you got to get excited about what God is allowing you to do for his kingdom. you got to get excited about it and say, thank God. I know sometimes we can get tired in, in our work, but, but just, just shake it off and endure hardness like a good soldier. And keep pressing in until you see uh, the glory of God. Of God. Now, now I'm I'm talking to you today about fasting and prayer, and 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 this is the title is to, to develop a hunger for God. See, I I think sometimes um, we need to be very careful that um, we don't allow our hunger for God to die down. 
I think sometimes that as we walk with God and when we first get close to God, we're on fire for God when we get saved. But I think sometimes we can get to a point where we get settled down in our walk and we, and it, we, just, we don't get excited about the things of God anymore. We're not in the word like we need to be. We're not pushing like we need to be. Amen. In other words, Apostle Paul says this, that we need to, as, a, as our walk in Christ, we need to keep pressing towards the mark of the, high, of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, in our walk with God, you got to keep pressing. Amen. I mean, it's just like, you know, like I always use this analogy. It's about, it's like, uh, you know, going on a diet or working out or going on a 20, doing the 21 day fast. You got to keep doing it until you, uh, until you um, do it until the very end, until you see the results. You've got to keep pressing in to the things of God. And we need to be very careful uh, that our fire doesn't die down. And we got to keep the fire going, you know. Uh, I believe this, that Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. The Bible talks about that. And we're in the end days. And, I, and the Bible actually says in Thessalonians that, that, that the trump of God will sound and that, um, and that the Christians will hear that trump and, and we will meet Jesus in the air talking about the rapture of the church. God, Jesus is about ready to come back for this glorious church. But the Bible says that he's coming back for Christians that that their oil is filled. In other words, he's coming back for Christians that's fired up for God. He's coming back for Christians that are, are still in the fight, as in fighting the good fight of faith. He's coming back for Christians that are seeking God with a whole heart. So, so we, need, as, we need to be very careful that our oil doesn't die down. In other words, oil keeps the fire going in our life. The oil means the oil of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's look at this. Uh, there, there are keys that will cause our fire or our hunger to go down. Number one, we, if we don't spend enough time in God's word, uh, we won't understand God's word. And we won't be able to apply God's word to bring us into that place that God wants to bring us into. In Matthew 13, 18 and 19, uh, this is Jesus. And he's talking about the parable uh, of the soils. And he, says, and, and he says, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes away, snatches away what was sown in his heart. And uh, this is he who receives seed on the wayside. So Jesus is talking about three different soils of people's hearts. And he says the first soil is the person that hears the word of God, but they don't understand it. In other words, they don't understand it enough to apply it to make it work for them in their lives. And when we don't understand the word of God, it's hard for us to apply that word of God. In other words, for us to act in faith when the word comes. And so what is the enemy trying to do? He's trying to keep us confused about the word of God. You know, the Bible is very simple. Uh, Salvation is very simple. You're saved by by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. You're saved by receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And when you receive him, he sits on the throne of your heart and you're saved by faith. It's simple. It's a simple gospel. But but to walk in faith, you've got to keep reading the Bible and, and get a revelation of who God is and get a revelation of who you are, because the devil will try to tell you that you're not saved at times. And so you've got to get into the word of God. Look at your neighbors and get into the word of God. Amen. And so here, the first soil is the person didn't understand it. And, and so what is the, uh, the remedy of understanding the word? Second Timothy 2.15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, so what was it saying? He's saying that, that, that we as Christians, we need to study our Bibles, not just take the pastor's word for it, but, but study the Bible and make sure that, the, that the, the Bible lines up with what the pastor preaches. And, and also the word of God can be divided wrongly. 
If it can be divided rightly, it can be divided wrongly. So everything has to connect in the Bible. And when you study the Bible out, it all connects together. Amen. So you just can't take a secluded scripture and, and, and base a whole teaching on one scripture. Amen. So we need to study. Look at your neighbor and say, study the word. Number two, what happens is uh, what will cause our fire or our hunger to die down is that we get disappointed or offended with God or other people in the body of Christ. Have you ever been disappointed? Have you ever believed God that that something was going to happen and it didn't work out the way you thought it was going to work out? Did you ever get a disappointment? And see, that's a setup from the enemy. He wants you to be disappointed. He wants you to be disappointed. I was listening to one minister and, and his church was growing and uh, and uh, they, they needed to buy land. And so but and they had it. They had this land locked set. They were going to uh, cl- they were closing on it that 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 one day. And the minister got there and the uh, the real estate agent said we sold it to somebody else. And, you know, and it, he was disappointed and he thought, oh, my gosh, the devil stole it from me. And, and he went to his wife and said, I can't believe it. We had this property. We we're going to build. The church was growing. And, and, and his wife said, God is bigger than that. If God wanted you to have that property, you would have got it. And God is a big God. And maybe some things may not have worked out. But I'm going to say this. God always has something better. And so that then another building opened up that was a wonderful building and and God got them this building that he didn't have to build on it. He just had to renovate it and it and it's serving his purpose and it's uh, it ended up being everything that he needed and more. Are you hearing why? Because, you know, just because you have a setback doesn't mean that 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 uh, that you've lost the game. In other words, there's going to be some setbacks, seemingly setbacks. But even though we might have a setback, just put your trust and faith in God and he will bring you back. He will bring you to a better place. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you today? So don't allow disappointment to come into your life. Don't allow offense. Offense knocks a lot of us out and locks a lot knocks us out from being hungry for God. Amen. Look at Matthew 13, 20 and 21. It says, but he that receives seed in the stony place, the same as he that hears the word and with joy receives it. So the person receives it. Amen. With joy. Yet he had no root in himself, but endures for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by, he is offended. Now, look. You know, we are in a spiritual warfare. You've got to get a revelation of this that is not just all God. Some preachers may preach God is, it's all God, and they may never mention anything about the devil. Amen? That they, maybe they don't want to mention anything about the devil because they don't want to glorify the devil. But there is a devil out here. There is darkness and light. There is a fight out here between good and evil. Amen. And there is a fight between righteousness and unrighteousness. And there and there is a devil out here. And his whole goal is to attack Christians. You know, he's not he, he will attack the world, worldly people, people that aren't Christians. But the devil likes to focus his attack on Christians. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? Why? Because the devil doesn't want you bearing fruit. He doesn't want you moving forward. He doesn't want you walking in victory. He doesn't want you walking in health and and wealth. And he doesn't want you walking in these things. So he's going to try to attack you. Amen. But I'm going to say this. Greater is he, Jesus, that is in you than he, the devil, that is in this world. And you and God are a majority no matter what you may be encountering. Do you believe that today? And so here we got to be very careful that we're not allowing these persecutions that will come. Amen. I, I, I've heard stories of people saying, I, 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 I finally got to your church. I said, really? Yeah, I've been trying to get here for weeks. And it's just something would come up every Sunday and every. But I finally made, I'm glad I made it out. And, and you know why? Because the enemy is constantly trying to keep people. See, the more truth you have in God's word, the more freedom you're going to walk in. 
And the less truth, the less freedom and more bondage. How many people want more bondage out here? No. How many people want more freedom? We all want more freedom. So as we, as we receive the word of God and we understand, listen, don't get mad at God. You've got to get a revelation here that God is not the one that's doing it to you. I know in Job, and there's a really great, there's a, a worship song. Uh, and, and it says, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job actually said that. That is a true statement, he said, but it's not a statement of truth. Can I say it again? It's a true statement, but Job didn't know that the devil was involved in taking, taking away everything. So in his mind's eye, it was only God. But see, it's, it's God and the devil. So when Job said, you know, and when he lost his fortune, if you know, if you've studied out Job, Job lost his health. He lost his family, his children. He lost, he lost his fortune. And, and so he said, he said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. No, a better statement that Job should have made was the Lord gives and the devil takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And why am I saying that? Because in John 10, 10, Jesus says it this way very clearly. Jesus said, it's the thief that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus is not the killer. Amen. Jesus is not the destroyer. Jesus is not taking people out early because he needs another angel in heaven. He's not, are you listening to what I'm saying today? No, it's the devil that comes to steal, kill, and and to destroy. And, and Jesus said, I came that what? That you may have life and have it more abundantly. We, we need to understand that and get a revelation of that. Because if you don't understand that, then the devil's going to hoodwink you. The devil's going to make you think that God's doing all this negative stuff in your life to teach you something. No, some stuff that comes in our life that's negative is because we open the doors to it. <laughs> Are you listening to what I'm saying today? I was reading, I was reading this story of, of uh, Esau and Jacob. Do you guys remember this story? Esau and Jacob in the Old Testament. And Esau was the first, firstborn. They were twins. And Esau, and as being the firstborn, he received, you know, he, he has the blessing on his life. And he has the right to, to have the blessing and, uh, and the birthright. It's called the birthright. So the firstborn uh, gets more blessed than the secondborn or the thirdborn. And uh, and so but anyway, uh, Esau, uh, he 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 was uh, hungry one day and he came came in from hunting and his uh, brother Jacob was a you know, he he wasn't a hunter. He was more of a he was more of a cook. And so he was cooking some beans. And what happened? Esau smelled those beans. He was hungry. And Jacob was you know, he was he was a, a good I, I consider him a good businessman. And he said, listen, I'll give you these bold beans if you if you will give me your birthright. And Esau, you know what he did? You know, because he was hungry, he said, what is my birthright? Because I am starving. I'll trade, trade it off. And this is interesting. He, 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 the Bible says that, that, God, that, 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 that God said that Esau despised his birthright for a bowl of beans. And we need to be very careful that we're not allowing uh, the sinfulness of this world system, that we're, that we're, not, uh, we're not entering into the sinfulness and we're, we're not allowing a bowl of beans to take away our birthright. And this is really interesting because uh, Jacob, um, you know, by encouragement of his mother, um, his dad was going to give the blessing. And so he came in and he tricked his dad and his dad blessed Jacob and gave him the blessing. Amen. He acted like he was Esau. And uh, and when Esau came in to get the blessing, his dad said, I already gave the blessing out. And then what, what this is really interesting. Uh, Esau said, I can't believe it. He stole my birthright. He didn't steal his birthright. He gave it away. But notice how we don't, we, we get clouded when we're in the wrong. We think people have done it to us. Are you listening? He said, he stole my birth. No, he gave his birthright away. He gave it away for a bowl of beans. And we, and you know, it's the same thing with King David. When, when, when uh, Nathan came to David and said, David, there was a rich man that had plenty of sheep. And there was this poor family. And, a, and a, a relative came in from out of town. And this rich man took the sheep of the poor family and, uh, and, uh, and slaughtered it for his relatives. And that sheep was like a pet to the poor family. And you know what David said? He said, David, what should we do about this? And David said, that man that took that sheep should die. 
You know, that's a pretty strong. And you know what Nathan said? That man is you, David. Why? Because David was the one that committed adultery with Bathsheba. He had Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, killed because she was pregnant with his baby. Amen. And he didn't, he didn't even recognize his own sin. And he was, he was exacting sin on somebody else. And the enemy will always try to get you to look at other people's weaknesses instead of you uh, allowing God to reveal your weakness to yourself. See, the Bible is a mirror and it should show up our weaknesses and in perfections and should get us to a place where we're closer to God, walking like God. Amen. We shouldn't be looking at other people, what they're not doing or, or what their, you know, what their uh, weaknesses are. No, we should be looking at ourselves. And then David, you know, said, you know, yes, I am the man. And he repented and he turned to God and thank God he kept his king. Uh, his kingship, even though, you know, a curse came on his family because of that. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says your sin will, will, will show you up. Right, you, you cannot hide sin forever. It will come around. Amen. But we can't sort of start focusing on others. We need to focus on ourselves. Amen. Yeah. And so, so we need to understand that. And, and so we must... We must understand that God is the one that blesses and the devil is the one that curses. Amen. So we got to stay hungry for God. We must be willing to sacrifice the natural blessings of this world to offer for supernatural blessings of God in this life. Amen. You know, again, Moses wasn't willing to stay in uh, Egypt, in the, in the castle of Egypt. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven twenty four, 24, by faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he looked to the reward." You know, this is telling me that, you know, when we're fasting and praying, we got to get, listen, this life is not just about living down here. It's not just about getting all that we can down here and trying to have it all down here. No, this life is a life that we're, we're storing up treasures in heaven. And, you know, this life is just a vapor. We're here only a short time, but we need to get an eternal perspective. See, as we're fasting and praying, God will give you an eternal perspective of, of what he wants you to do down here so that you can move into the greater things up there in heaven. Because by what we do down here, our obedience to God down here will, will tell the degree of where our place will be in heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And, you know, heaven and eternity is a lot longer than down here. This place is just a vapor. We're here today and gone tomorrow, and we need to get an eternal perspective. You know, Jesus says it this way in Matthew 16, 26. For what profit is it for a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for? For his soul. In other words, listen, we don't want to become people that's trying to get it all. Amen. In other words, we don't want to, you know, the third soil is the person that allows things to come in their life and they start forgetting about God. One of the, one of the greatest um, uh, tragedies that happens in some Christians' lives is that they start getting blessed by God and then, and then they're walking in financial blessing and then they start moving away from God. They get hard and they allow their financial blessings and their wealth to take place of their relationship. And we got to be very careful. We don't allow business to trump God in our life. That we don't allow our hobbies or entertainment or even the Bible says we don't even want to put anything before God. Jesus said, don't put your, your mom, your dad, your children. Don't allow anything to come between you and your God. Are you listening to what I'm saying today? And so a trap in the third soil, the trap of that third soil is that we allow distractions to come in. And what happens when distractions come in, we lose sight of God. We stop reading our Bible. We, start, we stop studying the word and we stop praising God. We stop, we stop going to church and we end up in a place where we don't need to be. 
I'm going to say this, and that we need to continue to keep our fire stoked in God. We've got to continue to, to, to fire up. You may not be that fire up this morning, or you may be struggling in your walk with God. That's why you need to get into the presence of God through fasting and prayer. Allow God to reveal himself. Allow God, allow God to renew you uh, in himself. And as he renews you in himself, you will have a new purpose. You will have a new walk about you, amen. Amen. You'll be a, a person going somewhere to happen. You believe that today? And so as we as we seek God and we continue, you know, the Bible says this, uh, that uh, Paul was ministering uh, to uh, to um, Timothy and Timothy was a young pastor. And Paul said to Timothy and Timothy was dealing with some trials in his church. And Paul said to Timothy, you have to stir up your faith. He says, you got to stir it up. You got to get, you got to, see, you got to get close to God. You got to stir up your faith. How do you do that? I'm telling you, like, 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 get up in the morning, you know, get the, crack the Bible open, start reading some word, get some worship music on, start, give God some worship and praise time in the morning, start praising him, just spend some time thanking him for the day, spend some time worshiping him. And when you start worshiping and praising, Praising God, the Bible says it's a weapon against the enemy. And you prepare yourself every morning. Every morning I have a church service. I know I've been telling you this. I mean, I have a, every morning I have a church service with God. I mean, I'm getting up and I'm reading my Bible. Then I'm getting my favorite worship songs and I'm playing, pray, uh, playing them. And I'm, then I'm worshiping God. Amen. I got my time. I'm in that. The Bible talks about being in that secret place of the most high. And listen, man, you need to get into that secret place of the most high. And what will happen? You will abide under the shadow of the almighty. And when you're in the shadow of the almighty, it doesn't matter. You got divine protection. It doesn't matter what the enemy's trying to throw at you. You're going to move into those places that God wants you to move in. You're going to be that triumphant church that God called you to be. You're going to be victorious in every area of your life. Do you believe it today? If you do, shout glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. One more time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you got to shout to your giants. You got to shout like David did when Goliath said, I'm going to take your head off. David said, no, I'm going to take your head off. He he ran to a giant speaking the word of God. And if you run into your, you run towards your giants speaking the word of God. And the word of God is like the sword that comes out of Jesus's mouth in the book of Revelation. And it will cut to pieces the enemy that's trying to cause a tragedy in your lives. Amen. Amen. Did you receive it today? Let's just uh, bow our heads in prayer. Father, I just thank you for your mercies and for your goodness today. I thank you, Father God, that you're revealing truth to us and that we're stirring up the gift that's inside of us. I thank you for every precious person in this church service today and those watching online. And Father, I know that you have good things for us. And perhaps, you know, our, our, we have lived our lives not in a way that, that has been totally pleasing to you, but we can start over today. Amen. Maybe you're w- listening here this morning or watching online and you know you got you, you to gotta get a fresh start with God. And I'm telling you, it starts by repenting. And that repentance means that you're turning to God and turning away from the world. So, so if you're ready to receive Jesus and a new leaf in life, just, just say this out loud and say it with faith. Say, dear God, I believe, Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. Jesus, I believe you were raised from the dead for my justification. Jesus, I repent of sin and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. And Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.